Think back to your childhood and early education. How prevalent were games to your learning? The games you may be thinking of might not be as relevant to students today who seek the glow of a tablet before other tactile sources. With advancing technology being a commonality in the daily interactions of today's youth, more creative and technologically inclined educational approaches are becoming invaluable. These games are available to students at the click of a mouse or the swipe of their finger, just like any other game they may use in their free time. E-learning games are a large part of that movement of creating an educational side to the virtual gaming world. This educational world that is grounded online is making it easier for students to seek out and access these learning resources outside of the classroom. Even though these resources can be accessed anywhere online, some instructors are trying to stay with this movement and integrate them into the classroom. E-learning is becoming a norm in schools and at home with the internet being accessed easily by most students in K-12 classrooms. There are numerous benefits to the integration of this technology into the lives of learners, but there are also several shortcomings that affect the adaptation, integration, and acceptance of e-learning as a legitimate source of education for students. Rebecca Karachikis, a teacher of 30 years in Yorktown, Virginia, teaching English, is one of those educators trying to embrace this technology that is coming into the classroom and students' homes. I know that this being 30 years of teaching, I feel like I'm behind the curve on this. The kids know so much more than I know. I do have to say the one thing I've got going for me is I'm willing to embrace it. I'm willing to let the kids teach me and to show me things that they use for their learning. Um, I know a lot of teachers are afraid of the technology. John Karachikis is a retired administrator and educator of 31 years in Hampton, Virginia. With, with, with those teachers that are a little bit hesitant or reluctant in introducing e-learning into their classroom, they, we've developed a culture of gaming, uh, and it's not just with, with, with schools anymore. It, we're in the learning. It, it has become part of our culture. So the gaming is something that at one point was seen as something one would go to an arcade. For example, I would go to an arcade and play Pac-Man when, when I was a, a you know late teenager, young adult. Versus now, where gaming is almost a secondary activity for most people. So I think the idea of gaming as something that was trivial or nonsensical at times has become pretty much part of the norm in our in our culture. When you consider e-learning games and how they apply to education, it is almost impossible not to draw some comparison to more entertainment-focused games and the vast success there have been with those lucratively and by means of user engagement and dedication. In the United States, nearly 170 million people played computer and video games in 2008, spending a record $11.7 billion. When you see that statistic, try to look past the monetary aspect to how popular the games were to users that they grossed so much money. So why not draw from those statistics in the entertainment realm and translate it over into the educational gaming world? It is statistics like that and the questions that it fuels that have drawn researchers to start to look at educational games and their benefits and uses as well as the use of technology and education in general. In relation to teaching styles, when I noticed that towards the end of my career as an administrator, um, we saw the introduction to uh, Promethean boards in the classroom, and uh, much like smart boards, but the adaptation of that technology to the classroom was uh, very, very, very difficult for a lot of teachers. Uh, the idea of using uh, the Promethean board versus the blackboard or versus uh, uses their uh, PowerPoint presentation and forcing them to integrate, and integrate the video clips versus showing on an entire movie um, uh, or a videotape to, to highlight something uh, was, was very, very different. Uh, as a matter of fact, we made it an instructional goal for all of our teachers to integrate uh, the Promethean boards within their instruction and we had to develop a lot of staff. We had to introduce, excuse me, introduce a lot of staff development programs, especially for those uh, uh, older staff or even some of the other staff that just weren't comfortable with technology in the first place. And it was almost forced upon them. 
uh, one day they came into their classrooms and there was a Promethean board. And uh, the, the monies that were uh, generated, that um, they weren't generated, they actually it was federal funding that helped bring the technology into the classroom. So one day they walked into their classroom, there's a Promethean board, they were saying, you know, boom, now you have to use it to teach. Um, it was very put off to a lot of, uh, especially older teachers or, or folks that just weren't simply comfortable with the use of technology in the classroom. This new virtual world of education utilizes learning management systems. These learning management systems are the digital forums in which students can be prompted by an instructor or software program to progress through content in a logical format to reach an ultimate goal through an online medium such as a website. When thinking about learning in a virtual environment or not, it's important to keep in mind that learning does not mean rote memorization. It means acquiring the skills and thought processes needed to respond appropriately under pressure in a variety of situations. The web serves as the perfect medium to bring game-based learning to light by highlighting innumerable situations and topics at the instructor's discretion. When considering game-based learning, there are four key principles to take part in the learning experience. 1. Students' prior knowledge can help or hinder learning. 2. Students' motivation determines, directs, and sustains what they do to learn. 3. To develop mastery, students must acquire component skills, practice integrating them, and know when to apply what they have learned. 4. Goal-directed practice coupled with targeted feedback enhances the quality of students' learning. It is also important to consider the abilities modern students have from growing up in this technological culture which game-based learning is so prevalent. Sharon Rees is an instructor in Blacksburg, Virginia for 31 years teaching keyboarding. Students um, are quicker and they, their, their hand-eye coordination is much faster which makes them type faster. Um, and any game helps. Even in my classes sometimes I'll use the draw game uh, to help control the mouse. Now I'm seeing them come in with that control already. They know how to do that type of stuff already because of the gaming at home and all the online access at home. I can see a huge difference in the kids at home that do not have this in the, in the home. They don't have computers or they don't have internet and they come in further behind than my other students. Games of numerous varieties have been utilized to support K-12 classrooms successfully for many different purposes, but taking the game idea out of the classroom and into the computer opens up a new world of reinforcement of learning materials and authenticity of content that can take the learner beyond what can be offered in the classroom. Games are a system in which players engage in artificial content defined by rules that results in a quantifiable outcome. This definition of a game may seem broad. But when thinking about a personal favorite game, try to pull each of these elements out of your knowledge of the game and see that they are all there without the user even knowing. Gameplay methodically provides the student with new and varied learning environments that meet his or her learning style. Games fit in almost every subject in today's classroom and carry those topics outside the classroom online and benefit different learning abilities and styles of students to help them better handle content in the classroom. I think that the virtual games and the gaming is great used as reinforcement or review. I think that students learn in many different ways and those who, who need the hands-on, um, constant reinforcement, I think these would be a great benefit for them. Uh, some of these things, you know, are paid type games and you have to wait until you get them through your school system. The ones that are out there that are free, um, sometimes they're not quite as accurate as you want them to be. Michelle Wortman is an elementary school teacher of 12 years in North Carolina. I think virtual games help students in a lot of ways. First of all, not everyone learns in the same manner. So this gives children an opportunity to um, kind of toy with their different learning styles. Also, I think it's, um, you know, it's a, good, it's a good break away for the children. They're so used to being involved with technology every day, more so than we ever were growing up. So they, 
they're comfortable with the use of technology. And of course, it's always great when you can learn and, and, and practice and you don't realize how much effort you're putting into it and, and what the rewards are going to be. There are also five key claims about the use of digital games in education. The claims are that digital games, one, are built on sound learning principles, two, provide more engagement for the learner, three, provide personalized learning opportunities, four, teach 21st century skills, five, provide an environment for authentic and relevant assessment. These five claims stand out as important foundational elements to ensure that e-learning and digital learning resources fulfill their most basic duty, to provide relevant and useful education to students in an engaging manner. Sound learning principles that e-learning can be built off of are materials that are created with a clear learning goal targeted at a group of learners that pulls from learners' previous knowledge to ground the new material. That doesn't mean that there was not methodical planning founded in key learning design to create the games and set learners up for success. Games lend themselves to be more engaging than just rote memorization and plugging away, with sequences of achievable elements that build the learner out to an ultimate goal while they are simultaneously engaging in fun, entertaining, and engaging activities keeps the learner focused on the learning at hand. One quality of e-learning games that is invaluable to supporting learners of every speed and ability is the ability that they have to self-pace their gaming experience and review steps of the game and content as they may need. This personalization of content and structure is what supports learning of all different levels and abilities. Through the student interacting with the content in this virtual environment, they're utilizing 21st century skills of accessing and successfully using this digital technology that is now a required normality for almost every modern function. Um, when the students come into my classroom now versus 31 years ago, they have much more knowledge of the computer. They don't have the skills for keyboard. So I have to still start from scratch on that, but then they learn much quicker. Um, even piano lessons have made a difference in how, how quickly they can uh, pick up the keyboard. But technology has made a huge difference because before I would have to tell them the sites, now they know a lot of the sites because they know how to search and find the websites. Um, I can go a lot faster, therefore, in a in a semester class, I'm covering way more material than I was in the past because I don't have to spend so much time on the, the basics. They know the basics of computer. They just don't have the skills of how to keyboard correctly. The academic interest in studying the educational potential of computer and video games has rapidly increased in the last few years. Stemming from the before-mentioned statistics with video games becoming such a popular and lucrative market and learners almost requiring such extensive engagement to remain engaged in the materials. But when you really break down a game, isn't there inherent learning in succeeding in a game? You recognize challenges and learn how to overcome them in order to progress. When we are actively engaged with a game, our minds are experiencing the pleasures of grappling with and coming to understand a new system. The most pivotal element that factors into the rapid utilization of e-learning games in recent years is the elusive task of motivating students to engage with content. Modern e-learning systems are more comprehensive and try to mitigate the problem of separation between students and instructors, such as lack of motivation. Motivation in academics can be looked at through the music model. M would be empowerment. Students have choices during their learning. U is usefulness. Instructors need to make the content useful to students' short and long-term goals. S is for success. Instructors need to design instruction to ensure that students believe that they can succeed. I is interest. Instructors need to interest students in the course activities and topics. Instructors also need to help students understand why the topic is valuable and help them develop their knowledge of the content. C is for caring, academic caring and personal caring. Content is supported by the instructor to foster the success of the student. Feeding into this fuel for motivation are the long implemented aspects of choice, action, feedback, resource management, and tactical and strategic planning that take place in educational gaming. These digital games require active engagement in environments, which supports discovery, observation, trial and error, problem solving, which puts students to master the material to advance in games. It can also be interpreted to incorporate a competitive nature in students. 
A recent survey from 2012 stated that 320,000 students, 25,000 educators, 20,000 parents, and 3,300 school administrators stated that over half of the students from 3rd through 12th grade would benefit and learn from games. A key aspect to keep in mind when considering the benefit of educational games for this generation is the already prevalent use of these technologies for their own entertainment and the ease that many of these learners have when subconsciously learning through these games. Um, as I mentioned already, I think the use of games in the classroom is extremely beneficial. Um, I think it allows children to break out of their comfort zone but yet remain in a comfort zone. Um, because they're so used to using technology anyways, as I had mentioned before. Um, but also because they, they can compete against themselves. They don't feel like they're up against other people in the class uh, when they're playing a game independently on, let's say, the class iPad. Um, but they see their improvement as their score is tracked, as they earn certificates, and so forth. I think especially for students in the primary level, experiencing visual stimulation tends to bring them into the learning environment. Most of these students now are millennial children of millennial parents, and they are often engaged with technology at a very early age. So the hands-on stimulation of picking up something and manipulating it to get a desired outcome is very much in their, in their mindset now. So for primary students, especially younger students, I don't see, I don't think they really see it as gaming at this point. I think everything they do with the manipulation of technology is, they're always in a discovery mode. Learning through games involves requiring the student to develop strategies in order to advance to the next level. However, the learning curve for the games includes interface, structure, and various strategies necessary to move forward in the game. One major benefit of this format of content presentation is the capability of students to personalize their education by making choices. These choices could be to self-pace their experience, choose their game character, or even the games they want to take part in to learn the material. Choices like these seem to be a luxury to the traditionalist, but with such a technologically advanced rising student population in K-12, these choices and the structure of e-learning games are necessary to keep learners of all different abilities and interests engaged with the content from start to end. In fact, further studies about what make learning fun have identified aspects that are aligned with learning principles favoring the development of skills and competencies rather than fact memorization. The county has embraced technology instead of fighting against it. So in our classrooms, we have students with their smartphones, their tablets, um, iPads, iPad minis, all, all kinds of things like that. And we allow them to use it. Um, in the English classroom, we use it. We have e-readers. We use it as quick reference sources, things like that. There are many challenges that games and technology can help overcome with students, such as providing a challenging and complex real-world environment within which to apply their theoretical knowledge and authenticity of the learning experience. There's also overcoming difficulties in dealing with ambiguity and vagueness in learning as they advance. Students can also develop and apply transferable analytical and problem-solving skills grounding the game-based learning in the relevant content that translates into the classroom. They may also develop self-confidence and increase motivation with their advancement through the game. These games also allow students time to reflect upon their experience and develop metacognitive strategies capable of adapting to new and evolving situations through self-paced learning. These points are important factors to consider for the benefit of e-learning games and the empowerment and engagement they give to students. With such a creative medium for content presentation, students may not even notice that they are in fact learning while they are taking part in the digital educational game. Stealth learning is when an instructor uses clever, disguised ways to introduce learning objectives through non-traditional tools such as games to encourage students to have fun and learn. Students think about merely playing, but they are simultaneously learning. Digital education games are primarily activities within the unit of learning that supplement the lesson at large. They are not 
but sole source of content delivery for students. It is important to see e-learning games as this and not a complete replacement of traditional educational implementation, but rather a new tool for educators' arsenals to engage students. There are innumerable other sources out there for students to use to supplement their education. Going into these examples and samples of what some sites have to offer, try to think like a K-12 student and see the graphics, challenges, sounds, and ease of use that can draw students in and make them forget that they are actually learning while they focus on just beating the game. Uh, Virginia View is a, is a software that I use to help the kids explore careers. And now it's a state requirement that by uh, the time they reach high school, they have to have a folder with all this data in it about their career plan. Inside Virginia View is all, all kinds of games and it helps them explore all the different careers and make career choices. Uh, now that career choice in sixth grade will totally change by seventh, by eighth, and definitely again by the time they graduate. But it, it makes them more aware of everything out there. When, when you put them in a, in a software like Virginia View or like Microtype, they're having fun, they love to do it, but they're also learning. And it makes learning more fun. So they don't mind doing all that repetition of work when they're having fun. I teach sixth grade keyboarding currently and I do um, a software called Microsoft uh, Microtype. And I teach the skills of typing with the keyboard covered so they can't see the keys and then to um, help learn the keys after they've been taught. I have computer games incorporated into that microtype software where they play a game using the correct keys and then they score points so they compete. Um, another thing I do in my classroom is to increase speed. We have a race and we race for one minute and any anytime they think they're playing a game they do better they try to improve their score and they actually practice outside of the classroom to increase their speed so they can win the game um, not realizing at the same time they're learning so in this micro type that I use they have basketball games they have uh, Wheel of Fortune games where they get tokens and they get to flip over and guess puzzles um, they have like clear the board race games there's all kinds of games incorporated in the software and while they're learning and playing the games, they're also learning the keys and learning to type much faster and more accurately. Here's a demonstration of Virginia View and the capabilities it provides for students.
Here's a demonstration of the free typing software available to students online and the different resources it has for these students. resources that I hear parents talking about that they use um, as learning tools for their children at home include Spelling City, uh, which is a site that they can plug in their weekly spelling or vocab words into, and the site will create games that they can use um, that are specified towards, you know, for those words, and they seem to really enjoy doing that one. Um, another one that I hear people talk about a lot is readworks.com uh, and you can bring up different reading games to play as well as print off um, materials that the children can use at home too. I also hear a lot of parents talk about using um, Math Magician uh, and they compete against themselves. Uh, those are probably uh, the three that I hear talked about the most. Here's a demonstration of Spelling City and the different games and interactions students may take part in through this free site.
After seeing some of these e-learning games in action, it is apparent that there can be some improvements so that these games can rival their entertainment-focused counterparts, but the engagement of users and reinforcement for classroom learning is undeniably apparent. The research community generally accepts the potential benefits of educational video games, even when such benefits have not yet been properly and empirically demonstrated. It would almost appear that the fuel for this research is the popularity of these games among student users. Though the many benefits of the adaptation and implementation of e-learning games has been covered thus far, since it is relatively new digital educational practice, there are still several shortcomings. Though researchers are now paying attention to this field, there is yet to be definitive data to support the benefits of these games and gaming systems. The integration of games into educational processes and how to effectively deliver the games to students are still open questions. Those unanswered questions are the ones that are creating barriers to widespread adaptation of these digital games pending positive results. Two more issues that arise with this technology at home and in the classroom are first, one of the main barriers that hinders the adoption of educational games is the complexity that they introduce to the learning process. And second, compared to students' homes, schools have a drastic lack in video gaming equipment necessary to run e-learning games. The complexity of this is referring to is technological capabilities, creation of the technology, relevance of the selected game to the lesson content, and progression. Technological capabilities come into play with the second point as well. Some students may be fortunate enough to have any technology they would need to access an e-learning game at home, while many other students do not and will be at a disadvantage to succeeding with course content when other students have more resources to utilize outside of the classroom. Uh, when, when children don't have access to computers at home or internet at home, it does hurt them. It puts them behind. Um, and, and I have a classroom of 32 brand new computers. We just got them. However, that doesn't help the child at home. And they're still a little behind and I can feel that. What do I do to help them with this? Um, I, I come in at seven o'clock, five days a week, so they can come in and get an extra 40 minutes of computer time with me. Um, the school is now offering, they're trying to offer internet for those that uh, can't afford for like $6 a month versus I pay $40 a month. So we're trying to encourage like that. We're trying to also give some of our older computers to families at home that qualify. Now, is this gonna help, help every child? No, because they still have to have the desire to do it. But when you do gaming and you have them doing things fun at home, even though they're learning, yes, it does help a lot. And it gives the kid a, an equal chance, an equal opportunity to be as, as good and uh, to learn as quickly as the other children that already have this that technology at home. The same argument can be made for schools. Some schools have abundant technology for students to access, while others have more sparsely available technology for individual students and classrooms to utilize. Issues arise with instructors in schools as well. Technology in the classroom, that is probably the bane of my existence. You have a great lesson plan that utilizes technology, and then the server goes down, or your internet connection is in and out. Um, it, builds a lot of frustration with the students who are excited about technology and it causes a lot of frustration with students when the server goes down, when the, the internet connection goes in and out. They're all excited about something that they're going to do in class using the technology, perhaps using the laptops, and then it doesn't work. And it's frustrating for the teacher, and it's doubly frustrating for the kids. The biggest obstacle of, of gaming in the classroom is you're, you're still in a, in, a, in a generational gap of, of teachers versus learners. Um, individuals such as myself who were educated in public schools beginning in the 1960s uh, through uh, all the way, I would say, until the 1980s. Technology wasn't readily available, it was expensive, it was uh, something that was always considered far and distant, and I think what you're going to have is you're going to see a gap in teaching that is going to get accelerated as younger people move into the profession. 
when you see older educators trying to involve and manipulate edu uh, the technology in front of students, it doesn't work necessarily. I think what you will find out is as we have a generational shift in public education, you will see a generational shift in the acceptance of uh, especially uh, uh, gaming and, and stimulations that will uh, enhance the, uh, the new learning environment. One of the biggest challenges in today's classroom is keeping net generation students motivated and engaged long enough to learn the material. These net generation students are those that were born after 1980. They have grown up with advancing technology and have become desensitized to the traditional learning experience in many cases. In relation to e-learning games for secondary students, for the most part, uh, I have found them to be not very useful. For primary students, as far as, especially in the areas of mathematics and science, and even for language development, they tend to be a little more effective. I believe at the secondary level, they're overly sensitized to using technology for more entertainment purposes. So that brings in the relevance of digital learning and e-learning games for this generation. So how far does the entertainment element of these games have to go to keep students engaged? This downfall to the system is part of the reason there is no definitive research on the topic yet. This younger generation brings complexity to the issue with their need for a variety of outlets of learning and their ability to multitask and almost desire this trait to fuel their engagement. Though there are some shortcomings and disadvantages to the widespread use and adoption of using e-learning games as the main content reinforcement required by schools, this relatively new and developing field is worth the research by professionals and gradual adoption by educators. There are literally endless possibilities for the content area that digital games could cover. It is important to be cautious about free online resources for accuracy and authenticity and that will pose a challenge for educators to either create their own games for students to use outside or even in the classroom or find reliable games online for students to use. This field may very well fall in the footsteps of the entertainment games and continue rising in popularity as more educators adopt them into their lessons and technological advances keep up with the demands of students and continue to motivate them to interact with the educational content through the digital platform. It is exciting to be at the threshold of research on this topic and see the further development of these e-learning games for K-12 education.